so uh, the note says that we have to redo that means i will read each sentence and we will discuss it if necessary so they are in the chapter where he is explaining to us the various planes of consciousness and each one he is giving you the characteristics first of all there is the material world then there is the life world these are actual worlds placed one on top of the other like a pyramidal structure okay so this is a way of speaking actually there is no vertical and no horizontal now this is a, our ideas because <coughs> let us take a human being standing in pondicherry the up is for him what would be the down for someone at the opposite end of the earth okay suppose you are on the uh, arctic circle and you are looking up okay what about the person looking uh, up also on the south pole so what is up and down is relative so there is no such up and down there is no such uh, uh, um, uh, gradation we do do speak of gradations of subtler subtler is true but not up and down these ideas of up and down are because we have in the dimensions of space but actually in the spiritual world there are no dimensions and there are no there is no space there at all okay so it's absolutely psychological so this is what he is discussing so we will read each sentence and see whether it's clear but this you must keep in mind but it's very useful to think of up and down because it gives us a clarity of thought okay so these i am reading the sentence these highest worlds are therefore supra mental okay so in this sentence supra mental is uh, can be taken in a very broad sense it is not the supra mental of the gnosis but they are above the mind in that sense okay he could have said supra hyphen mental above the mind they belong to the principle of super mind the free spiritual or divine intelligence or gnosis and to the triple spiritual principle of sachid ananda so he is speaking of the highest level there is a second level and there is a third level he is referring very clearly here to the third level but the free spiritual and divine huh? intelligence can come good morning gita good morning angada okay so we are reading on page 456 okay. so uh, there is a footnote to intelligence so let's see that ah so he is equating super mind with vijnana there are many people who are translating there is one person in uh, in delhi who is translating the you know, life divine and other and so we use the word vijnana for hindi or in sanskrit okay he is very clearly saying vijnana but buddhi is a word i am reading the footnote right? uh, buddhi is used in two senses buddhi is used for the normal intelligence of man at the mental level but it is also used for the higher mind the spiritual uh, intelligence okay so that's why shrimad has given the footnote it is a little um it's a little wide meaning okay that's why he has given the so we come back to the the word intelligence he has used the word intelligence which normally he does not use okay he doesn't use intelligence normally refers only to the mental we use the word intelligence oh he is a very intelligent man but intelligence in the sense of um of consciousness there are many others like jiddu krishnamurti and others who use the word intelligence in the sense of consciousness but shrimdev is here using very rarely the word intelligence meaning the higher planes of consciousness also awareness and consciousness or gnosis when he is using the word gnosis is very clear he is representing the supramental itself so although i said that the word supramental in the first line can be interpreted widely but here he is definitely speaking about the super mind and the three principles of sat chit ananda triple spiritual principle of sat chit ananda so from them the lower worlds derive by a sort of fall of the purusha into certain specific and narrow conditions of the play of the soul with its nature if you remember he is he has defined each level of consciousness as a relation between purusha and prakriti okay 
soul and nature. Soul is Purusha, Prakriti is nature. Chit and Shakti. Their relations go on changing. They are always together, but in inverse proportions. <coughs> okay. uh, we have discussed this many times. In matter, for instance, force is very, very dominant, but consciousness seems to be sleeping. So if you want to put it very clearly in mathematical terms, which is a little gross, but it's very useful to understand. Consciousness is 0.001 in matter. Okay, I'm saying 0.001 because the potential is there to rise. If I had said zero, then there is no potential, it can never rise. So it is 0.0001 and the force, Shakti, it is there in the nuclear energy also, it is there hiding, it has to be extracted. That is 99.999%. If you go to the self in the middle, the spiritual planes of consciousness, then it, then it is reversed. Shakti is there, but it is held back, it is not allowed to act. Okay? It is like the water behind the dam or the horses about to start a, a race. There is energy, but it is held back. So, 0.001 zero, zero, zero zero of Shakti and 99.99 of consciousness. And then when you go to the highest level, they become absolutely equal to each other. So, that's why Shabdi is saying, you can see the word very clearly. Um, from them, the lower words derived by a sort of fall, he is saying sort of fall, because it's not really a fall, it's a diminution. And it would be a fall, the word fall can be used when you are forced to fall. But here it is self-will. The divine is himself reducing himself. So you can't say fall, because the fall would be involuntary. But here the fall is voluntary. That's why she would be using the word sort of. Huh? See that? Derived by a sort of fall. So, Sandhya is so precise. Okay? He is not saying by a fall. Whereas the Christians do say it's a fall from paradise. Adam and Eve were banished. In fact, they go even one step further. It's not even a fall. They have been banished from there. There is no banishing. It's a willing and purposeful descent. So, therefore, sort of fall. Of the Purusha into specific and narrow conditions of the play of the soul with its nature. Nature is hiding itself and enjoying and playing. In Savitri Sevna says, there is an exchange of uh, glances between the eyes of the Purusha and the eyes of the Prakriti. They are playing with each other. Once they are hiding from each other, once they are revealing themselves to each other, this is the play of Purusha and Prakriti. Okay. Then he says, from them, from them, from the highest planes of consciousness, Satchidananda. The lower words derived by a sort of fall from the Purusha into certain specific and narrow conditions of the play of the soul with its nature. Note the words, certain specific or narrow, okay? because they become limited. There is a fall and a limitation that occurs. <coughs> the lower words derived by a sort of fall, by a sort of fall, the, from them the lower words derived by sort of all into the Purusha into certain specific narrow conditions of the play. Why specific and narrow? Because they are not exactly what they are in this spiritual planes of caution. There is a diminution, that's why narrow, of the play of the soul within. Note the word play. There is an enjoyment. There is a hiding and a revealing, and hiding and a revealing. Even at the individual level it is like that, hiding and revealing, consciousness and force. But these also are divided from us by no unbridgeable gulf. This is Sivendu's idea, whereas the others, Mayavada and the Buddhists are saying, it is unbridgeable. It is not possible to have a connection between the highest and the lowest. There is no connection. Sivendu is busy establishing the connection through many, many chapters. And here he is just mentioning that they can be, the gulf can be breached. You can by a an effort, spiritual effort of yoga, you can go to level 2 and from there you can even go to level 3. Nobody is saying it is easy, but it can be done. Okay? 
but these also are divided from us by no unbridgeable gulf. They are divided, but they are crossable <laughs> if you want. They can be crossed and overcome. They affect us through what are called the knowledge sheath and the bliss sheath. Okay. These two, there is the Annamaya Kosha. Annamaya Kosha. That's the physical word. Kosha is a sheath. So they are also using the word sheath, a covering. So, second is Pranamaya Kosha, the life sheath. Then there is the mental sheath, which is the um, Manomaya Kosha. Then you come to knowledge kosha and bliss kosha. Okay? Knowledge kosha is the supermind, vijjana, and bliss kosha is the anandamaya kosha. So, anandamaya, you can almost say it's no kosha at all because it's infinite. There is no covering there to it. So, these are the five planes of consciousness that he is referring to here called an knowledge sheath and bliss sheath. Through the causal or spiritual body. The causal and spiritual body is the second level. Okay? That's it. Third sheet, uh, sorry, the fourth sheet, because the first sheet is matter, second sheet is life, the third sheet is mind, and the fourth sheet is the causal or spiritual. Okay. You can divide in so many ways. The causal also is, a, uh, you can, if you divide into three, okay, it depends on where you draw the line. It's not like a staircase, it's more like a ramp. Okay. So you can say gross world. Subtle world and causal world. So it depends. In fact, each plane above is the cause of the one below. Even at the lowest level, it is like that. It is life that produces matter. It is mind that produces life. It is the spiritual planes of consciousness that produce the universe. And when you go to the highest level, it is such ananda through super mind that the world is created. Okay. So, it's called the knowledge sheath and the bliss sheath. The yeah. Vijjana kosha and Ananda kosha. Through the causal or spiritual body. So the causal and spiritual body is in the middle, second level two. And less directly through mental body. That's a, our normal mind. Nor are their secret powers absent from the workings of the vital and material existence. So even in the body, all these powers are there hidden. They are there involved. They are there inherent and potentially there. That's what Sir is saying. Or spiritual body. Okay. Sorry. Uh, less directly through the mental body. Nor are they secret powers absent from the workings of the vital and the material existence. Our conscious spiritual being, our conscious spiritual being, and our intuitive mind awaken in us as a result of the pressure of these highest words on the mental being in life and body. Note the word pressure. Okay? There, is, there are two pressures. One is a pressure from below because they are divine and they cannot be suppressed for too long. Okay? There is a, definitely a, a, a pressure from below. The divine element in matter is trying to get out of the prison. So there is a pressure from, it's a pressure moving upwards. But there is also a pressure from above, which is pressing on the lower plane to encourage it to come out. So this is the, the pressure that he is talking about. So we have discussed this earlier, if you remember. <laughs> I gave you the, the image of two glasses of water. Na? So connected with a tube underneath. Now, if you press on one glass, the level in the other one will rise. That's the principle that is used for the pressure from above. So when the life is pressing on matter, life hiding in matter can come out more easily. If there is no pressure, it will take a long time. It did take a long time, even with the pressure. But now, as we were discussing the other day, the evolution is going much, much faster. Doctors are even seeing that evolution is going much faster because the supermind has been pressed into matter. That work Mother did, 1956, 29th February. Okay, so I go to the next. They have, we were discussing pressure of these highest words on mental and life and body. But this causal body is, as we may say, little developed in the majority of men. The 
uh, we gave another instance also of the different planes of consciousness. So okay. you can compare it to a seven-storied house. You are all living on the ground floor, and there is no. So they are saying there is no. They are very little developed. In other words, there is no staircase yet from level one, from ground level to level one. There is no staircase. You have to build it. If you build the staircase, then you can go to the first floor. You can go to the second floor. You can go to the third floor. But how do you do that? By yoga. It is yoga that builds the staircase. It's very difficult in the beginning. It's not easy because there is no staircase. <coughs> there is an image that is often presented to people who are trying to do that, and the image is no staircase, but just a a slope like that. And you you have to climb up that slope, slippery slope, and go up. It's not easy. It's very difficult. And there is another image also that comes very often. Okay, it's like a thin rope. If there is a rope from the seventh floor to the lowest floor, you can climb up. Okay, it's possible with effort you can climb. But the rope is not that um, thick. It's a string in the beginning, so it will break. <laughs> If you try to bring, it's a string, but that string by yoga can be made into a rope. Then you can climb up. So yoga is essential, whether it be a slope and you have to build a staircase, or whether it is a a thin string which is hanging from the top to the bottom. It has to be made thick, and that can be done by yoga. Okay. So Sridhar is saying very categorically. That there is a that connection, even if it is not there in the beginning, seems to be not there. It can be built. That's what he's saying. I, I'll read that sentence. It'll be very clear what he's saying. But this causal body, that is level three, in the division of three, this causal body is, as we may say, little developed in the majority of men, and to live in it or to ascend to the supramental plane, as distinguished from corresponding sub planes, corresponding sub planes. Very clearly, matter, life, and mind. But why is he using the word corresponding? Because matter corresponds to sat, and chit shakti corresponds to vital, and shakti corresponds. Sorry, super mind corresponds to mind. That's why using the word corresponding. In other words, the word corresponding also is emphasizing the connection between the two. Okay, between the higher and the lower. So every word it gives you a picture. Or if you had not used the word corresponding in just its subplanes, you could have thought that there is no connection. But he is very clearly establishing the connection by using the word corresponding, okay. in the mental being, and still more to dwell consciously upon them is the most difficult thing of all for the human being. So, a human being, ordinary human being who is not done yoga, there is no there existing. But you can't climb very easily to those higher places of consciousness. Very difficult thing they say. To live in it or to ascend, there are two possibilities. If you live in it, then you have permanently achieved it, or you ascend to it and then descend again. But now, after ascending, the desire to go back again to that becomes very very strong. Okay. The aspiration increases. <coughs> But this causal body is, as we may say, okay, little developed in the majority of men, and to live in it or to ascend to the supramental plane, as distinguished from the corresponding subplanes in the mental plane, or still more to dwell consciously upon them, is the most difficult thing of all for the human being. It can be done in a trance of samadhi. So you can do that in two ways. Na? One way is to Go into a trance of samadhi. That means you lose the consciousness of the physical world. That's a trance of samadhi. But otherwise, only by new evolution of the capacities of the individual purusha, of which few are even willing to conceive. Okay, <laughs> yeah, very few know that there are higher planes to which you can go. Okay, that's what I am saying. So, first is trance of samadhi, but otherwise. Another case only by a new evolution of the capacity of the individual purusha. That's the yoga that he is talking about. New evolution of the capacities. You build the staircase to the other floors and develop the other floors that can be built. 
of the individual purusha of which few are even willing to accept. Yet, is that the condition of the perfect self-consciousness by which alone the purusha can possess the full conscious control of prakriti. So, only in the spiritual, in the not in the spiritual planes as well. In the spiritual planes, the power to control the lower starts coming, but it is not full at all. It becomes completely full when you go to the supermatic level. That's what he's saying. Yet, is that the condition of the perfect self-consciousness? Perfect self-consciousness by which alone the purusha can possess the full conscious control of prakriti, complete, including the body. From the spiritual planes of consciousness, which is the number two level, second level, you can have an effect on the mind, certainly vital, also certainly, but the body only partially. But even that is possible, <coughs> not fully. You can't control the body fully. Okay. <coughs> so, for there, not even the mind determines, but the spirit freely uses the lower differentiating principles. The Lower differentiating principles, matter, life and mind. Differentiating, they are different. Life is different from matter, matter is different from mind. As minor terms of its existence, governed by the higher and reaching by them their own perfect capacity. This is very similar to the manager sitting on the uh, in the uh, office and controlling things at the uh, floor of the, uh, the, uh, the factory. So the body, mind, life are the workers. They are very lower instruments, and the divine is the manager sitting on top and managing, but not himself doing. Okay, so he can control from there perfectly if there is a connection between them. That alone would be the perfect evolution of the involved and development of the underdeveloped, for which the purusha has sought in the material universe as if in a wager with itself. It's a challenge. Okay. The conditions of the greatest difficult. So, I use the image of the manager sitting at the highest floor and controlling things at the factory level, the workers at the factory level. But is that control possible without an assistant manager and a sub manager and a you know, supervisor on the floor? No, it is not possible because he gives instructions and it is to be carried down there. But exactly as in the image that I am giving you, same thing happens also with the spiritual planes of consciousness. The manager, who is the supermind, is giving instructions down the line, but sometimes they don't reach the floor level. <laughs> that is why we are not conscious. And even if the guidance is there from the highest, at our level we are not receiving the message or we are misinterpreting the message and we do the wrong things. That's what Sam is explaining here. Okay. These images that we discuss are very helpful to understand the connection, very, very similar. And that is because, as he keeps on saying, the physical world is a symbol. All the principles that operate here in the physical world are distorted images of that which is the higher truths. Okay? That's why when we give examples to ourselves from the lower world, it very easily explains and we can understand more um, uh, clearly, the spiritual truths. That's it. okay. So, to sum up the paragraph, okay, I am reading the summary of what we have just now discussed in a nutshell. Okay. So, Swami so is saying the highest of the spiritual planes, referred to above as the supramental, okay, they are divine totally free. They are the three principles of Sat, Chit, Ananda. It is from these highest causal worlds that the lowest planes draw their nature and their characteristics. But the glory and splendor of the highest are much reduced and even apparently distorted in the representative lower nature of body, life and mind. Okay? They are distorted. They are pay, fail pale representations, pale images of the Satchitananda. The supramental substance, power and consciousness and bliss become mere shadows in the lower hemisphere of body-mind life. But this diminution and loss is caused 
by the willed manifestation of this purusha. That's why Sandra used the word sort of fall. It's not a fall. It's a willed fall. It's an intentional, purposeful fall because of the adventure. And Sandra is using the word adventure here, he is using the word uh, wager, a sort of wager, he is saying. No? A wager, you know what it is, no? it's a bet. Okay. So it is betting with itself that I can do it. Plunging himself to the greatest difficulty and emerging from there. <laughs> the powers of the highest planes are available in the lower hemisphere, though as a mere shadow of the original principles. This descending Purusha sets up a playful interaction with Prakriti. It's a play. His own companion power. So Purusha and Prakriti are companions, but they are playing hide and seek. <laughs> they are enjoying their <laughs> their uh, hide and seek game. Okay. Uh, this is what happens at the individual level also. When you experience the divine, he doesn't come first time, he disappears, he shows himself and disappears. That's the symbol of the Sri Krishna and the uh, gopis. Na? There are so beautiful songs, bhajans, where he says, <coughs> the night is going on, but the Raina beat jaye, Shyamana Ai. Okay, so this is exactly what is these songs are all there. They are very representative of this. They hide. Okay, the night is going away, but Sham has not yet come. <laughs> so, so this is the descending Purusha sets up a playful interaction with Prakriti, his own companion power. These highest planes, however difficult to attain, are not impossible of ascent. The five sheets that are the stepping stairs. To the top are matter, which you use the word bhu, life, which is bhuvar, mind, which is swar, then you have knowledge, which is vijjana, and then you have bliss, which is ananda. So, the gross world, subtle world, and causal world, you can divide into three, not five. You can set the divides into seven. This is the increasing graded subtlety as one mounts the ladder of manifestation. The highest planes press down upon the lower and awaken the latent secret powers and principles inherent in matter. Intuition, sight, hearing are released by this downward pressure. To ascend to the supramental planes is not easy. Still more difficult is it to dwell in them permanently. That can be done in samadhi, which does not translate into divine transformation of body-mind life. Most you so you, if you go into samadhi, yes, your soul experiences these highest planes, knowledge comes, but the body mind life does not get transformed. Most humans are not even interested, not even aware of them, but it is only the supramental, the gnosis, that permits the purusha to become master of practice. It is for this tremendous purpose of divinizing the worldly life that the Purusha has plunged into the nether worlds in a self-challenging spirit. Self-challenging spirit, I am referring to the wager, the Shirdi is saying, and impose on his own manifestation the maximum difficulty for evolution to solve. So this is what he is saying in the para. I have gone into detail even in the summary. Okay? So, 8.20, we have got 15 minutes. So, I hope it was clear and I have not gone too fast. Shall we go to the next para? Yes, yes. Oh, that completes the subject. Sub -chat. Oh, very good. So, the lower triple purusha. The lower triple purusha? <coughs> Annamaya purusha, Pranamaya purusha, Manomaya purusha. Note interestingly that matter is infinite and impersonal, but there is a Purusha, a being representing this one in the intraconscious. Okay. There is a life plane, okay? the life plane of consciousness also and is very interesting because think of Hanuman, what is he? He is Vayuputra, he is the representative, the Purusha of the life world. Okay. They also use the word Marutatmaja, okay? He is born from the 
Marut, the wind power. He is a Vayuputra. He is born from there. So there is a universal plane of life and there is a personal plane of life. That's a Purusha. When you use the word Purusha, that's what it means. So he is going to describe now the lower triple Purusha. After having explained to you that there are many, many planes, he is going to start with the lowest of the planes. Then he will come to the higher planes later on in other chapters. So, since we have time, we can read the first para, right? So, who will read? Shall I? Shall I? Okay. Which is the constituent principle of the various worlds of cosmic existence and the various planes of our being? They are as if a ladder plunged down into matter and perhaps below it, rising up into the heights of the spirit, even perhaps to the point at which existence escapes out of cosmic being into ranges of a supra-cosmic absolute. So at least it is evered in the world system of the Buddhists, but to our ordinary materialized consciousness, all this does not exist because it is hidden from us by our preoccupation with our existence in a little corner of the material universe and with the petty experience of the little hour of time which is represented by our life in a single body upon this earth. To that consciousness, the world is a mass of material things and forces in some kind of shape and harmonized into a system of regulated movements by a number of fixed self-existent laws which we have to obey, by which we are governed and circumscribed and of which we have to get the best knowledge, we can so as to make the most of this one brief existence which begins with birth, ends with death and has no second recurrence. Our own being is a sort of accident or at least a very small and minor circumstance in the universal life of matter or the eternal continuity of the working of material force, somehow or other a soul or mind has come to exist in a body and it stumbles about among things and forces which it does not very well understand and at first preoccupied with the difficulty of managing to live in a dangerous and largely hostile world and then with the effort to understand its laws and use them so as to make life as tolerable or as happy as possible to so long as it lasts. If we were really nothing more than such a minor movement of individualized mind in matter, existence would have nothing more to offer us. Its best part would be at most of this struggle, most this struggle of an ephemeral intellect and with will with eternal matter and with the difficulties of life supplemented and eased by a play of imagination and by the consoling fictions presented to us by religion and art and all the wonders dream of, of by the brooding mind and restless fancy of man. Okay, slightly more than a page. So. Actually, these uh, chapters are not summarized, so we will discuss in detail. I have not yet done it. Uh, later chapters I have summarized, but this I have not, so I have yet to come to it. So, let us read what he is saying and understand what he is saying. He is dealing with the three lowest levels of the planes of existence. Matter, material world, life world and mental world. Such is the constituent principle of the various worlds of cosmic existence and the various planes of our being. So, the constituent principle of the various worlds of cosmic existence. In the cosmic existence, what is visible to us is these three planes of consciousness. They are the lowest, level one, matter, life and mind. They are universal, but they are also, they are represented also by the Personal aspect of all these planes. There is a Manomaya Purusha, there is a Pranamaya Purusha, there is even a Annamaya Purusha. Even matter is represented by uh, Purushas, limited principles, individual aspects. So, 
Such is the Cartesian principle of the various worlds of cosmic existence and the various planes of our being, of our being. They are as if a ladder plunging down into matter and perhaps below it. So, very interesting. I keep saying there is not a ladder, but it's a ramp. That's why I'm saying as if. Okay. So, you can think of it as a ladder. You can also think of it as a ramp. Because a ladder has got very clear divisions like that. No? Whereas a ramp is something going up. Each one is percolating into the other. So, as if a ladder plunging down into matter and perhaps below it. Why is he using the word perhaps? Because it is not very clear. We feel that matter is the lowest. But actually there is an inconscient which is even lower than matter. Even matter has got some consciousness and energy. You can extract energy from matter. But the inconscient is almost nothing. It is stifling. Mother had one experience now of it. She says that even the inconscient and the superconscient are connected. If you remember the experience she had, it was a New Year message. She said that I had this experience of going into the inconscient, stifling, most narrow and stifling. And from there, she was thrown as if by a violent spring into the supramental, which was vibrating with the seeds of a new world. This is her experience. So there is a connection between the two. It's not like a ladder. It's like a ladder which is connected in the highest and the lowest. Okay. So, so, and perhaps below it, rising up to the heights of the spirit, even perhaps to the point at which existence escapes out of cosmic being into the ranges of a supra-cosmic absolute. Okay. And even here is using the word perhaps to a point. Okay. See, because nobody has gone experiencing beyond the supermind as yet. How can you say that? Because if you go up to the supermind or even beyond, you cannot come back to give a report. Individual souls can go up, certainly. But they cannot come back to give a report. So nobody knows in the physical world what is above there. That's why using the word perhaps. Okay, so. Even perhaps to the point at which existence escapes out of cosmic being. Cosmic being, the universe. Into ranges of a supra-cosmic absolute. So one is the cosmic being and you can go beyond the cosmic being to the supra-cosmic, which is the transcendent. So at least it is averred. So at least it is confirmed and insisted on in the world system of the Buddhists. But to our ordinary materialized consciousness, all this does not exist because it is hidden from us by our preoccupation with our existence in a little corner of the material universe. Now just see that. Even the material universe, we are there only in a little corner. Sirendra could have said little less corner because we are there on the earth planet. Okay, But the earth planet is what? One of 100,000 million planets. Now they are discovering. Earlier days people said there are only nine planets. <laughs> But now we have discovered that there are planets in the universe far, far, far away. So, the earth is nothing but a, a little, in fact, in life divine history, if you remember, a little mud and water is a little speck of mud and water. <laughs> he describes the earth, the physical world as a, a little speck of mud and water. <laughs> so, here he is using the word little corner on the material universe. Even material we are now nowhere. And with the petty experience of the little hour of time, my God, look at that. The petty experience of the little hour of time, because you can go outside time and then the little hour disappears. Time disappears at the higher levels of consciousness, which is represented by our life in a single body upon the surface. Now he is talking about the single body theory. Okay? To that consciousness, the world is a mass of material things and forces. Which consciousness? The physical consciousness. When you are in the ordinary physical, vital, mental consciousness. To that consciousness, the world is a mass of material things and forces thrown into some kind of shape and harmonized into a system of regulated movements by a number of fixed self-existing laws. 
this whole sentence, you can use one word for it. System of regulated movements. Movements are regulated, not chaotic. Movement, regulated movement by number of fixed self-existent laws. I can say physics. The study of physics gives you exactly this. Regulated movements, there are laws in the physical world by number of fixed self-existent laws. Okay? Which are, we are, which we have to obey. We are subject to these laws by which we are governed and circumscribed. Circumscribed, limited, encircled. Circumscribed. Circumference, when you are stuck in a circumference, you are circumscribed. And of which we have to get the best knowledge we can so as to make the most of this one brief existence which begins with birth ends with death and has no second deterrence. So Rembe is not talking about his own Advaita philosophy, but he's talking of the other uh, philosophies. Okay? Uh, not even the Buddhism, because Buddhism admits rebirth, but Christianity does not admit rebirth, and the uh, other religions also don't admit rebirth. Only one fixed, brief existence, only one life here, which begins with birth, ends with death, and has no second recurrence. No second recurrence, no rebirth. By the way, I think you should know that the when the Christian um, center, okay, Christianity came into existence 200 years after Christ. And that time it was, um, it was the Vatican, na, the Rome. Maybe Vatican was not built at that time. But Rome was the center of Christian uh, religion. That was the propagating center. But later on it went to Istanbul, okay, what is Constantinople, now it is called Istanbul. So it went there and when it went there 400 years after Christ, they decided, the priests decided that theory of rebirth can be thrown out. We can't believe it. So that is when it was thrown out. And that is coming down the ages, even today it is there. But now, even in the western countries, they are realizing that there is rebirth because there is a lot of evidence. There are 2,000 cases in America itself of proof of rebirth. So, no second recurrence. Our own being is a sort of accident. He's still talking of the theory of only one life. Our own being is a sort of accident. You can't explain it. Or at least a very small and minor circumstance in the universal life of matter or of the eternal continuity of the workings of material force. So, even if you admit, yeah, there are two things. Universal life, okay. an individual life is a very small minor circumstance. Okay. He's talking of human life, but also it applies to animal life also. A very small minor circumstance of universal life of matter. Or the eternal continuity, even if you grant that the world is going to exist forever, the human life is a very small limited thing, even if the world is going to continue forever. He is giving you both the cases. Okay. So, what's the time? 33. We've got two minutes. We'll finish the paragraph. Somehow or other, a soul or mind, again, see, he is saying soul and mind because the normal man confuses between soul and mind. That's why he is using the word a soul or mind has come to exist in a body. That shows us that he is not talking of his own theory, huh? he is talking of the other theory. The normal man is here. One life and very small amount and confusion between soul and mind has come to exist in a body and stumbles about among things and forces which it does not very well understand. Science is trying to understand the physical world, but not very well. At first preoccupied with the difficulty of managing to live in a dangerous and largely hostile world. The animals have to really struggle for existence. Okay? That's the, also the Darwinian theory that life is a struggle. Okay? You have to, there is a constant struggle to survive. The survival of the fittest, that's why I said this is the word, dangerous and largely hostile world. And why hostile? Because the duality that exists here, everything has got an opposite, so it becomes dangerous. Okay? Largely hostile world. And then, with the effort to understand its laws and use them so as to make life as tolerable 
or as happy as possible so long as it lasts. If we were really nothing more than such a minor movement of individualized mind in matter, so no, no, he is using the word individualized mind because there is a universal mind plane and our mind is an individualized mind in matter, existence would have nothing more to offer to us if we believe that only the material world is real. Its best part would be at most the struggle of an ephemeral intellect, an intellect which is coming to existence and will disappear with death. Ephemeral intellect as well as will with eternal matter. Okay. Note the intellect and will are ephemeral, but matter is eternal. Even if you grant that to be true, science says even the sun will disappear one day, but not the universe. The matter with the difficulties of life supplemented and eased by a play of imagination and by the consoling fictions presented to us by religion and art and all the wonders dreamed of by the brooding mind and the restless fancy of man. Brooding mind, the philosophies. The restless fancy of mind, imagination. Restless fancy of mind, your imagination. And somehow we are managing to survive because of two things. There are play of imagination and the consoling fictions. Religion is consoling you and saying that wait, wait, wait. The physical world is not the only world. There is a God also who is there who can redeem your sufferings and all. He can get them rid of it. Consoling fiction. He is defining religion as consoling fiction. In the spiritual life, there is no fiction. It is absolutely a reality. But religions are consoling fictions presented to us by religion and art and all the wonders dreamed of by the brooding mind. <laughs> wonders dreamed of by the brooding mind, the philosophies that man has created. Restless fancy of man, obviously restless means the vital. So, with the vital and the mind, you are trying to tell yourself that there is something more. That's what it's saying. Okay, so we stop here today. I have crossed the time by two minutes. So, next time we have to read the new para, but because he is a soul. So, Zendra is described in the first one, the material life. But because there is a soul, he can go to the higher levels of quadrant, that's the next path. But because he is a soul. So, Good morning, everybody. Happy Okay, good morning, everybody.